Hey there! Today I'm so excited to be talking about the Panhandlers. Their new album just came out this past Friday and I've been obsessed with it. I think it is such a beautiful portrayal of West Texas. Every single song on this album has to do with pans, handles, panhandles, panhandlers, flat land, or West Texas. And I think that's pretty awesome. In one of my earliest videos, I reviewed Seneca by Charles Wesley Godwin, and I said that it was an ode to West Virginia and Appalachia. To me, this album does that same exact thing for West Texas and the Texas Panhandle. Um, what's really exciting about this album and this group is that they're all Texas, specifically West Texas country artists that all have their own individual projects, but they're all coming together for the first time as the Panhandlers. What I love about this album, as I mentioned, is how much it exemplifies West Texas. I feel like it just paints such a beautiful picture of that part of the country and there's so much imagery of like West Texas landscape of open plains and deserts and tumbleweeds and cactus flowers. It also portrays the people and a sense of what life is like there, um, how it is rural and it's full of small towns and there's not much to do and people think about leaving and it's very lonely because there's not that many people. Some fun facts are that it is known to be a stronghold for conservative politics. Um, some major industries are livestock, petroleum and natural gas production and textiles such as grain and cotton. The Texas Panhandle is actually different than the Oklahoma Panhandle. There are actually 10 US states with panhandles. That fact kind of blew my mind. As I mentioned, some of the general themes are just a sense of place and um, an attachment to the geographical region that the music is being created from. And that's one of my favorite aspects of country music. Let's talk about the four guys here. I know to an outsider, upon initial encounter, you're like, oh, they're just four cowboy Texas country dudes. But once you dive in deeper, you might realize that they are actually super different and it's so cool that they're all coming together. Josh Abbott is the guy who had the original idea to bring them all together. Um, I would say that he is the most popular and well-known and also has the most poppy, fun songs. Um, I am probably actually least familiar with his music. And then we have William Clark Green, who also has very fun, upbeat songs, but I would say with a grittier, darker edge than Josh Abbott. As I mentioned in an older video, I once hiked a whole mountain by myself only listening to William Clark Green and it was absolutely beautiful and spiritual so he will forever hold a place in my heart. And then we have John Bauman. I would say he's my favorite songwriter. Um, he has the most interesting personal ballads that create this sense of place. I want to say that his songs are dark and lonesome and serious, but also with a bit of humor. Um, I love his songs Midland and Bible Belt, and his song Gulf Moon was recorded by Kenny Chesney. And finally, we have Cleto Cordero of Flatland Cavalry. I think he's probably the youngest and newest to the music scene. I think it's Funny that he was studying to be an accountant before pursuing music. Flatland Cavalry is often compared to the Turnpike Troubadours, but they are different. And I know Grady talks about them all the time, and I really love their sound and their upbeat energy and the fiddle, but also really, really beautiful songwriting. 
So the first song is called West Texas In My Eye and it is so incredibly gorgeous. It is an ode to West Texas, but it is also mourning the loss of West Texas. You can tell that the narrator really loves West Texas and he thought he was gonna stay there his whole life and he says, I never thought I'd live to see the day I say goodbye. You have all of this beautiful West Texas imagery um, throughout. You have tumbleweeds, desert sage, open plains, thunder, farmers, ranchers, dust, and wind. It's a really beautiful sounding song especially with the fiddle and the pedal steel. But it's also very bittersweet, and there's this sense of loss and decay. The farmers are going into debt. The water table is gonna fall below the reach of humankind. It's almost mourning the loss of West Texas, as I mentioned, and the narrator, he's leaving West Texas, and he's saying, I ain't crying, that's West Texas in my eye. song is called This Flatland Life, which is such a fun, upbeat, groovy song. I love it so much. Um, I really love the banjo and the dobro and the fiddle. It's about living in West Texas and being like, this is our lives. <laughs> it's a really realistic portrayal of what life is like. You know, it's like we got the oil and the wind. We got Republicans and Democrats, people who claim to have seen the light and those who want to stay out all night. But in the end, we're all the same because in the end, we're all gonna die and lay beneath this flatland life and a South Plains dream. No Handle is another really, really fun song. Basically saying, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here, but I'm here. <laughs> it once again describes the land and all of its natural disasters and how hard it is. Um, it's so flat, it's so windy, it, we have the hottest summers. Um, winter is a cruel bitch who don't care for your comfort. You got thieving birds and rodents and roaches and it's it's a tough place to live. It could drive you to drink, or it could drive you to think flat earthers know something after all. Um, so it's just like, this is a place that will drive you crazy. I love the line, nobody chooses where they're from or where they'll go when kingdom come. So it's like, I didn't choose this life. I just was placed here and I gotta make do with what I have. I'm just a man in the middle of this pan. I got no handle on what I'm doing here. So once again, really appreciate the, the pan handle puns. <laughs> I love the banjo, the pedal steel, the fiddle. It just has a really fun, upbeat, rock and roll feel. So Panhandle Slam is definitely one of my favorite songs on this album. I think it has the prettiest melody. It is a nice, slow waltz. So it's about this guy named Panhandle Slim, and he's living out in West Texas. There's all of these beautiful um, images of comparing him to elements of nature. Um, he grew like a weed in the West Texas rain, always reaching for the sky, sharp as a thorn on a prickly pear. It's ultimately a love song because Panhandle Slim, he's lonely he's strong you know he's like i'm i'm doing fine if you ask him he says he's doing fine and then he meets this girl and her eyes are like sapphire and she looks finer than a georgia o'keefe it's kind of ambiguous whether they end up together but i would like to think that they do <laughs> it's a super cute love story about a lonesome cowboy who is in search of love and meets a girl at the end with a beautiful melody and lyrics and instruments. Once again, you get pedal steel, banjo, and fiddle. So West Texas Girl, I would say, is the most Turnpike troubadours -y song on here. So what I mean by that is I'm getting like Turnpike Troubadours vibes from this song, and I think it's the something about the lyrics and how it tells a story and it has all these details. It is a conversation, a story between the narrator, 
who meets this West Texas girl who's like, hop on into my truck, which is a great contrast to every bro country story where it's the guy saying that. The West Texas girl gives him a ride in her truck and then takes him home and then they end up married in the end. Sorry for the spoilers. And you find that out because it says streamers and cans on the back of a flatbed. And it's just a really cute love story um, told through another slow, slower paced waltz with some beautiful instruments. Um, you got the banjo, dobro, mandolin, fiddle. Oh my gosh, I love this song so much. It's definitely also one of my favorites. What is cool is that the word panhandler has multiple definitions here. Like, this song is kind of weird because you're like, okay, the song is called The Panhandler by the panhandlers on the panhandler album. And you're like, okay, that's a lot of panhandlers. But the word panhandler, the word the word panhandler has multiple definitions here because a panhandler is one who panhandles, aka an urban beggar who typically stands on a street with an outstretched container in hand begging for a loose change or money. So maybe it started because they started with pans. Um, so this is actually a song about um, panhandlers, not to be confused with someone who is from the Texas Panhandle. I freaking love this song. It's in a minor key, which gives it kind of this dark ballad quality, but it has hopeful undertones. Um, and I think the melody is just so pretty. And the instruments, banjo, pedal steel, mandolin, so beautiful. And it it is quite a beat and has this driving rhythm. It, it is really an ode to the downtrodden and forgotten folks in society. It speaks for the homeless and the drifters and junkies in dark alleys and hitchhikers along highways at night. It has a somewhat uh, subtle political message because later on you get um, this image of the king's men plotting behind closed doors in glass castles, playing with the fortune of people who fight for justice. So I'm gonna be honest, this is probably my least favorite song. Um, that's not to say that it's a bad song, I think it's just that I like all the other songs way more. This one kind of falls flat for me, it's kind of boring, um, and I hate that I'm saying that, but because I usually love like slow acoustic songs, um, but there's just not too much going on here, and that's maybe that's the point of the song, you know, it's about being lonely, it's about having a lonesome heart, and um, you know, once again, you get some Texas imagery. Um, you have tumbleweeds and desert sands. It also has this like spacey, echoey, electric quality, and which is funny because that's how I describe the John Moreland album, which I just reviewed. Um, but I don't feel like it works as well here within this album. There's all these comparisons of like, if I was the moon, if I was the sun, if I was a penny, um, and it's this thought experiment, I guess, of like, if I were this, what would I do? And um, that's cool, I guess, but um, I don't know, this song I'm not really like coming back to. This song, Cactus Flower, is just so beautiful. I know I say that about every song, but it is a really beautiful love song. Um, I believe Cleto Cordero of Flatland Cavalry wrote this about his fiance, Caitlin Butts, who is my new obsession. Um, and apparently it was written as part of like a songwriting challenge exercise and it turned out beautifully. It basically likens her to a cactus flower, which is once again beautiful West Texas um, desert imagery. And, um, you know, it's a love song. And usually I'm like, wow, love songs are so boring. But I really love this one because it um, has images and phrases that are really unique and quirky. I love the line, she's a stubborn, sunburned soul swaying in the summer wind. A lot of alliteration there. I think it just paints this beautiful picture of 
this cactus flower girl. <laughs> the dobro, fiddle, banjo, mm, yes, awesome, amazing, beautiful. Oh my gosh, this song is amazing. This is basically like the group's anthem. Um, it's sung by Josh Abbott and it's so fun and it's probably the most like basic poppy song on here. Um, to me it feels like the West Texas version of Red Solo Cup by Toby Keith, but I just love how honest and real it is. And it's just saying, this is us, this is our life. Um, we're a rowdy group of dreamers, drinkers, and has-beens. And the best part to me is the, um, I guess it's the bridge, where he introduces all of the members of the Panhandlers. It's just a beautiful portrayal of their personalities and them all, all four of them coming together um, you know, William's loud, but he's a good hey. John's an eloquent and pensive writer. Cleto's a poet and we all know it. He worries about the world and tries not to show it. Me, I'm pretty blunt and I've got a good heart. Tonight, the only place I want to be is here with y'all. And when I first heard that, it almost made me cry because it was so cute. Rockin' is yet again one of my favorite songs. It's a very John Bauman song. It reminds me of his song Midland. That first line that also is the ending line just really makes me feel things. They say there's nothing to do here but stare up at the sky, listen to the wind, and pray the day goes by. It's once again a portrayal of life in West Texas but there's this deep sense of contentment and satisfaction and gratitude with one's life. It does portray the negative aspects of living there. There's heat waves, there's tornadoes, there's dust storms. Um, it's, it's a hard life, but I've found a way to live here and I've made a home in this country paradise. I did not know what a cap rock was. I looked it up. So apparently the cap rock is a region in the panhandle of Texas, west of the cap rock escarpment. Um, I did not know what an escarpment was either. Um, apparently it's where like the land is like flat and then it like goes up into a mountain so gonna do a little cap rocking i believe is just living in this area and being happy with life there and you have this these images of county fairs front porch rocking chairs and just looking up at the stars it's so beautiful and peaceful and such a fulfilling end to this album and ties it all together. This album, as I mentioned, is an ode to West Texas um, that portrays beauty and also the hardships of living there. But despite all of that, I'm going to stay here and it will be a part of me forever. And um, I really love this album, guys, as you can tell. I hope you love it as much as I do. <laughs> Bye.